Our buddy McKinnon sent us an article, and it, it was a Medium article. It was from Chiefs Kingdom or, or whatever, uh, discussing Eric Bieniemy and Patrick Mahomes' relationship this past year and how it led to a debacle in the AFC Championship game. Now, that article, we got through it and whatnot. I, I didn't get to finish reading it, but I read the majority of it, and that article has since been deleted which I found very surprising. But inside of that article, there is quite a bit of information, and it is from, you know, Kansas City Chiefs insiders, reporters that actually cover the team, etc. And basically, uh, let, let me go through some of the information here uh, that I was able to get out. Um, at one point, Eric Bieniemy early in the season, went off on Mahomes for absolutely nothing according to sources, just absolutely went bananas on him. Um, and the quarterback coach got him, he got more involved in the passing game, et cetera. The wide receivers coach did as well. Uh, apparently, you know, we've talked multiple times now about the enemy not getting these big head coaching jobs and everybody trying to figure out what is the deal here? Why is he not getting these jobs? And the NFL was actually pushing him on franchises. Uh, there are reports that, the NFL pushed for the New Orleans Saints to give Bienemy the job, and he didn't interview well. I mean, he's been up for like 15 jobs at this point. And he apparently never comes in with a good, concise plan to sell for the future of the franchise when he comes in to talk to these owners, which is uh, a bit of an issue for sure. Uh, there was something else in here that said that uh, basically nobody likes his overall plans for a franchise. He doesn't listen to his players. His contract allows him to call uh, every play after the first initial game plan, so like the scripted plays, 10 to 15 plays, which might explain why the Chiefs were so much worse in the second half of games this year, which we could not figure out for the life of us what was happening with that. Uh, but apparently, all of this stuff goes on, and then in the AFC Championship game, where their offense looked like gangbusters in the first half and then could do nothing in the second half, Apparently, there were multiple instances where there were three different coaches trying to talk to Mahomes on the mic during the game, and Mahomes said, if somebody doesn't call a play, I'm going to do it. Do you find any of this, one, to be not believable, but two, do you find that uh, this stuff could actually be true and this could be what uh, what might cause the enemy to, one, not get a, a head coaching job in this league, but two, he might be on, on the outs with the Chiefs. Yeah, I think I do think stuff like this is believable because it comes from too many different reports across too many different people in the organization, and 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 you know when you have multiple people saying very similar things, that that just gives it, it's too hard to manipulate and manufacture that that kind of information, right? Right. I mean, so, it's, so it's I, insane so that, to think about. Yeah, so that's what makes me believe the majority. Up, oh, Chris, did we lose you? I don't know if your phone got muted or what happened. <laughs> well, I suppose we have lost Chris, but uh, but that's all right. I'm going to keep the phone turned on. We'll see if he comes back in here. Uh, there we go. Call failed. I don't know what's going on there. But either way, it was very interesting to read this about the enemy. There we go. We got Chris back in. Chris, we got you. Up, oh, hang on, hang on. We got to get you back onto uh, the board here. There we go. All right, what you got? Hey, I never, I never lost you at all. But anyway, strange. Uh, no, there's just too, too many people involved in the in the leaks and in the reports and in the and all this for it to for all of it to be made up. You know, can some of it be exaggerated? Probably, but that's how stories go. Um, so they, they said, with, by the way, hold on, let me let me interrupt you. They said that his uh, he became the play caller uh, for the 2020 season. So after they won the Super Bowl, he then became the play caller. And now, you know, this is two straight years, but his contract ran out after the 2020 season, and everybody assumed that he was going to get a head coaching job, and he didn't. So then they very quietly gave him a $1 million one-year extension on his contract, expecting that he was going to come back and he was going to get a head coaching job after this past uh, season. And that has not 
come to bear. And now they're trying to figure out what to do with him because he doesn't have a contract with Kansas City. But they also don't like the way that he's doing things. So, you know, we we have a slight issue going on with Kansas City where uh, this is somebody that has kind of been put up on a pedestal and yet his own team may not even like him. So give me your thoughts this on that. This is the reason. So remember, I don't know how long ago it was, we talked about, um, you know, black coaches getting a raw deal in the NFL. And I talked about how this is absolutely a problem. But this is not an enemy problem. Like, the way the media has portrayed Eric and has pushed this, it's, it's, it's as if they're trying to sell him. They're trying to push him. You talked about even the league is trying to push him into getting the job. That doesn't fix all of your black coaches getting a raw deal situation, okay? And, 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 and I don't know why everyone thinks this one person getting a job solves all the problems, okay? I, if, I, if I had a job open in the NFL and I was an NFL owner, I would not be calling Eric. There's four or five black coaches that I would love to interview, sit down and talk to and potentially hire because I'm a huge fan of their resumes, what they've done, all of these things. Mr. Bienemy is not one of them. Agreed. And, and honestly, he's still getting the interviews. It's just that he's not getting any of the jobs, which means that maybe, something— Maybe some minority coaches aren't getting these jobs because Eric Bienemy is getting all of these interviews instead of other more qualified or not maybe not more qualified, but better candidates that are minorities. Right. We right. keep giving the same minority over and over again the interviews. Why don't it's, we give other guys the interviews? So so here's the question, I guess. If if the Chiefs end up not keeping him as their offensive coordinator, and he I, I would fully expect that he will get an offensive coordinator role somewhere in the yeah, league. I but what happens when that fails? Does this then become an issue uh, going forward where he just didn't get the right opportunity? Or at what point do you think that they stop pushing this narrative that he has been done wrong, and instead it's just that he's not good with his players and maybe he's not a great play caller? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I don't know the answer to that, okay? that That's the problem. I think the best thing they can do is to these owners start giving these minorities, start giving these black coaches more opportunities and real legit opportunities, not bullshit Steve Wilkes opportunities where I hired a black guy to tank. And then as soon as the tank was over, I fired his ass. Like, no, 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 that's a bullshit thing. You can't do that. But to give them real legitimate interviews, real legitimate shots at getting these jobs, give them a chance at it because I, we just know their football mind is no different than a white guy's football mind. That's just how minds work. That's how the game works. Like, they're just as deserving as everyone else. They're not getting the shake. Getting Eric bien a shake is not fixing the problem. Yeah, you're not wrong. You're not wrong because I, I think these owners realize when they bring him in for these interviews that uh, we can't win with this I guy. Honestly, I honestly think Eric is going to end up at, at, at a college somewhere, probably being a head coach. I could see him going to an HBCU or someplace like that to be a head coach. I, I don't think there's a power job out there available. There might be a G5 job out there available for him. Um, but I, I think he could, I think if he wants to be a head coach, that's his best opportunity. If we're going to, if we're going to turn the conversation to what's best for Eric. That's his best opportunity is to go take a job where you can be a head coach and let people see how you run a program. It's it's really kind of crazy to look back. So, you know, Colorado hired Carl Durrell a couple of years ago. And yes. there was all this talk about Eric Bieniemy possibly being up for that job because he played at Colorado. And yeah. there did not appear to be a lot of interest in that situation from the Colorado side which I found very interesting, but if there's no plan, then why would you hire him in the first place? Right? It, it was... I don't know. It, it seemed like a, a way, way big difference in the, the caliber of coach at that point. And, all right, you can bring in Eric Bieniemy, or you can bring in a retread like Carl Durrell. 
And Carl Durrell, I think at the time, was like a special teams coordinator in the NFL or something and then went back to college. And it didn't make a ton of sense. And, and not that it makes a ton of sense right now because Colorado fell off a cliff this past year. It looked like he had improved things in that first season. But regardless, uh, that was like a COVID year. Uh, this, I mean, I don't know what is going to happen here, uh, but he has such a a large narrative built around him that I don't know what they're going to do. Uh, the fact that this article came out and then was deleted within just a few hours, uh, I don't know if that is uh, they're deleting it because the information wasn't true or if it means that the information was true and they just didn't want it out there. Hey, well, and here's the deal. I don't know is that the team called and said, hey, I want you to take this down. Or is it the people that run the website and the paper saying, hey, we don't, we don't want to go this route. I want you to take this down. It's and a, I'd like to know the answer to that. If you're going to take like the article that. down, that's fine. I would like to know who asked you to take it down. I think, I think that's an acceptable – because if stuff's wrong you, – you, you, you and me talked about this off air. If stuff is wrong in the article, you print a retraction. You can't just take it down. You can't, you can't report something false about somebody and then just say, oh, my bad, I made up a bunch of lies, I'll take it down. No, no, no. You got to leave the lies up and then you got to put the retraction in next to the lies so everybody in the world knows you were a liar or you got something wrong. Well, so here's the thing. Okay. In the article, there were uh, several instances because this has been up for a little while as I was reading through yeah, it. Was it was up all day. Yeah, there all were day. there were multiple instances in there of information that they had even just a little bit wrong and they said, "Oh, okay, so this one play or this one thing uh was actually this, you know, we apologize for the mistake." But they would put it in there yeah, right where it was, right? Yep, they corrected a few of the mistakes. Right. As the day went on and, 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 and word came out. And then they just took the whole thing down. That's that's different. You can't take something down if you if you butcher the story because that lets you off the hook. And that lets the person that you wrote about just they're just done. You just roasted them and then nobody knows why you took it down. We're all speculating now. So if this is all wrong information, I think you got to leave it up. I think this is a political move where we don't like the, the narrative this spin. We don't like the way this makes our organization look, uh, whether that be the Chiefs or whether that be the, the paper or the, the website. And we want you to take it down. And we're your employer. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's interesting. It's very interesting. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.